Hi, I'm David Holt. You know, when most people think of the blues, they probably think of the Mississippi Delta and hard-driving artists like Robert Johnson and Charlie Patton. But in the Southeast, a different style of blues developed, sometimes called the Piedmont Blues. It had a melodic, lilting, almost ragtimey feel, like what I was playing a moment ago. Now, there were some great artists in the heyday of the blues in the 1920s and 30s, guys like Blind Blake and Blind Boy Fuller. They set the standard for this style of guitar playing. Now, in this show, we're going to meet some people who grew up with this style of music and still play Piedmont blues today. Etta Baker of Caldwell County, North Carolina, has been playing guitar for more than 80 years and shows no signs of slowing down in the future. Etta's soft, melodic sound offers us a glimpse back into the pre-blues styles that would have been popular in African-American communities before the turn of the century. It wasn't until the early 1900s that these styles evolved into what we now call Piedmont blues. That's beautiful. Now, where did you learn that tune, Etta? Learned that from my daddy. In fact, you learned to play the guitar from your daddy, didn't you? Right. Uh, how old were you when you started? I was three. Three? Three years old, and I can do the three basic chords. Is that right? On a little tiny guitar. Uh-huh. And uh, your dad would teach you this? He, he's the only teacher I ever had. Did he play in this style? Yes, he did. Now, when you were young and taking a tune like Carolina Breakdown, would that have been played at a party? Would that have been played just around the home? When would that have been at played? Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the... People around would have uh, Saturday night fish fries and dances. And they would dance to this music? Oh, yeah. And it could be loud enough even though you had an acoustic guitar? Right. Huh. If that was the first blues that your dad ever heard, then what would he consider something like uh, Railroad Bill? That was country. That was country? That country. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This is not what most people would consider blues, and, and as you said, your dad called it country music. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do play some what, what people would call more standard modern blues. Um, play one of those. On the other hand, baby, or... talk about how you play. Do you use three fingers or two fingers? Two. Uh-huh, just your thumb and your index finger. Mm-hmm. So play a little bit more and let's look at that closely. The bass note is being kept by the thumb and the melody is played by the index finger. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming that's the way your dad played, too. Yeah. Uh, did you ever see anyone use a flat pick? Use a, a pick when you were young? 
Mm-mm. Everybody played this way. Sure did. Actually, were there many other people besides your dad in the community where you grew up that played like Just this? Just about everybody in the same little section, you know, mm-hmm. had about the same style. You were at the World's Fair in Knoxville, and you, and you made up a song. Tell us how that came about. Well, when I hear music constantly, I don't sleep real sound, and I kept hearing these different chords. And quarter till three, I got up, and went out on this porch, and sit out there. It was nice and quiet, and I put the chords together. And I went over the next morning, and I told them I had a brand new song, and I didn't have no name for it. And so they said, play it and we'll name it, and they named it the Knoxville Rag. The audience named it. Right. Now this is called slide guitar playing, mm-hmm. and tell me how you learned about it. Well, uh, I saw my dad break a bottle. He filed a little gray ring around the bottle, and then he just hit it and snapped it off. Then he would dull it on another rock, turning it around, and then he got it to where it, he felt like it wasn't dangerous, you know, to use it to get cut, and so he started playing with a bottleneck, and then he would use his knife, pocket knife, sometimes. And you can use just a piece of pipe like this. Mm -hmm. Um, Did he play many tunes in this style? That's the only one I heard him play with the slide. John Henry? John Henry. Oh, that's a great one. When people see this, they're going to think, oh, this lady's been a professional musician her whole life. But that's not the case, is it? (laughs) No. (laughs) You work in, tell tell us what you you used to do for a living. Oh, I worked at uh, Buster Brown Plant for 25 years. Uh Uh-huh. So you played music on the side. Oh, yeah. How did you have time with nine kids? (laughs) I made them be quiet. Careless Love is a song whose origins are hard to trace. It dates back to the late 1800s and has been a staple of both white and black musicians over the years. Etta's version is a good example of how the song was probably known in its original form. In Tarboro, North Carolina, the version performed by George Higgs reflects the influence of the blues on the song. Many musicians of George's generation first heard traditional songs like Careless Love through the recorded versions of professional blues men. Well, love, oh, love, oh, Kelly. Love, oh, love, oh, Kelly, love. Love, oh, love, oh, Kelly. See what Kelly. 
Where'd you learn careless love? Careless love? Well, I got that from a uh, blind boy, you know, blind boy Fuller made it. Yeah. You, you heard a recording of Blind Boy right. Fuller. Did you ever see Blind Boy Fuller play in person? Oh, yeah, I'm so small, you know, but he came to Tarver once and and I think it was Florida, I believe in the Florida. <laughs> Where did you learn to play the harmonica? Uh, I that from my father. He, he played harmonica. And uh, I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> the first harmonica I played inside my dad, was, uh, I heard was inside my dad was uh, an old fella called D. Ford Bell. He used to come on around a lot. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of the greats. Well, so your dad played harmonica. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what were some of the kind of tunes he played? Well, he played more old spiritual song mostly and try and hold him unto the Lord. in those days when you were a kid? Uh, I think when I, my first harmonica he gave me, I think it was 15, 20 cents, I believe. 20 cents. And it's $20 so now. Eight hours, $20 now. <laughs> the same harp. <laughs> same harp, that's same right. Harp, yeah. What's the first song you ever learned, George? The first song I ever, ever learned to blow uh, for myself was, uh, I believe, Old Black Joe. Can you play a little of that? Yeah. <laughs> It been so long, but I forgot it. Yeah, it's been <laughs> yeah, a while back. Yeah, there you go. But my first blues song was uh, the one where my father played so much. I had to learn that song about if you mistreat me, baby, after I've been good to you. And I just love that song. Play a little bit of that one.
If you mistreat me, baby, I've been good to you long, long. Well, now, haven't I been good to you? Well, now, haven't I been good? Have I been good to you? So you grew up on a farm in Speed, North Carolina. Right. And uh, I assume that's a very little place. Oh, yeah. That's what they call a slow down with a fast name. <laughs> <laughs> slow down with a fast name. Yeah. I like that. Speed. Sweet, yeah. Well, so you farmed yourself after your dad passed away. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And what did you farm? Cotton, peanuts, corn, a few soybeans. Now let's go back to when you were a little boy growing up in Speed. Did you hear music? Did you hear much music at that time? Yeah. Well, mostly what we hear our music from, you know, at house parties and, you know, the old folks get together, get around them old fruit jar and a corn liquor and they would sing. Wanna see my show? Wanna see my show? I want me drown. I want me drown me downtown. George Higgs' music is an example of the loose, down-home sound, which is the country blues. However, in the years after World War II, the sound of the music began to change, partly because of the appearance of the electric guitar. During the Great Depression, many African Americans had moved from the farms into the cities in search of work. Durham, North Carolina, was the home of a black college and many successful black-owned businesses. It became home to a vibrant African American population. Because of the roads and railroads, people could travel more. That, along with radio and phonograph records, made it easier for people to hear a wide variety of music. In cities like Durham, country blues players began to hear the new electrified blues that was becoming a popular style of music. And that had a big influence on the development of the modern urban blues after World War II. John D. Holman of Durham has been playing in this more modern style since the 40s. We recently got together at a diner in downtown Durham. down to my house. That's a great old blind boy Fuller tune. Yeah, that's so nice. Now, you grew up out in the country, but occasionally, uh, back in the 30s, you would, you and your family would come into town to sell tobacco, and that's where you would see some yeah. of these fellas. My daddy would bring me to town with him while he was selling the tobacco. Sometimes we'd stay about all day, and then in the time we would be blind boy Fuller and Gary and all of them, but I was small. I didn't get a good look at them because I was a kid. They much taller than me, so I have to peek through the crowd to try to see them, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you learned a lot of your music off records. Who were some of your favorite recording artists back in those days? Well, I liked Blind Boy Fuller, and I liked the li uh, Lightning Hopkins, mm -hmm. and also uh, Brown and McGee and Sonny Terry. Mm -hmm. I liked them right well. Yeah, they were great. And of course, Blind Boy influenced so many people around the South, oh, yeah. particularly North Carolina. Yeah. Now, he played a lot of things like that ragtime tune that we were just playing, mm -hmm. but he also That's played, uh, he was back in the 1930s, so he was kind of that transition between that ragtime blues and oh, the, yeah. the more had a lot of urban blues. Slow, yeah. tight blues. Some people were calling the down home blues. Uh -huh. it much slower than that ragtime beat, so. Uh, why don't you play us one of those? Maybe that letter blues or something like that. Okay, he did this. I 
I got a letter here this morning. Kiss it away, my little read. I got a letter early this morning. This is the way my little Reed. He said, Come on home, blind boy. You tell me your little baby's dead. He said, Ain't all right. I'm afraid a telegram might get left. I say, hey, boy, I'm coming on home to you. You're kind of an interesting example of of the blues because oh, you yeah. grew up in the country. You learned from some of these records, but you had family that played. That's correct. And then when you came to move to Durham, which was in the 50s, right? Yeah, from 1954. You started started hearing a more modern kind of music and... Yes, I really did. Uh, something like Chuck Berry plays similar rock and roll, you know, yeah, like, uh -huh. you know, back uh -huh. then, 50, yeah. Well, Lightning Hopkins is a good example. In fact, you met like Lightning Yeah, Hopkins, I met Lightning, so uh, I opened the show for him once. I got to see him one time, so uh, I liked his style. Well, why don't you play us one of those? Because that's definitely more modern than the uh, old Blind Boy Fuller stuff. Give me back that wig I bought you, baby. Gotta let your dog go head go. Back that wig I bought you, please, ma'am. Gotta let your dog go on head go ball. Yes, when I come to find out early this morning, baby, you didn't need no hair at all. You know that woman she tried to quit me. I ain't done nothing wrong. She threw me out of doors. I ain't got another home. Give me back my wig I bought you. Gotta let your dog go head go ball. Yes, when I come to find out early this morning, baby, you didn't need no. You made your living as a heavy equipment operator, right? Yes, I did. You're a good enough musician to make a living playing music, but where did you play your music if you weren't doing it for a living? Well, I was playing around like at night at Sammy's shop, shoe shine stand. It's a little building uptown here that they shine shoes in. So we got us there to entertain whilst we shine the shoes there a couple hours about every night. Uh -huh. so house parties like too? That. And also house parties. I did a few of those. And like birthday and pig picking. I did a few of those. Well, let's play one of those tunes you might have uh, played at those situations. Waves 
so be. You just talk, that's all.